also on Union Street. We were successful in getting the fence removed from the temporary fence removed from the property on James Street. There is a similar fence that has been on Union Street for many years since the steel mill removed their water tanks. I don't believe they even know that it sits there as an eyesore on Union Street. Well, they cut it once or twice a year, so they know it's there. <laughs> yes, but it is also its own bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. And perhaps we might just ask them if they might remove that fence, because it's obviously not securing anything any longer. Um, one other, and I'm curious as to council's thoughts on this. If you have a, a, a piece of land, Union Street has a number of them. You know, up on, on both hills, there are, there are areas where there's vacant lot. I, I think that we are just as well served by having that become a wooded area as by keeping it mowed and clean. Where I find objection is when it's sort of in between. In other words, not being kept, but looks like it's just not cutting your grass. And I'm curious as to, to the rest of council's thoughts on that, of, of letting a vacant parcel be reclaimed and become wooded, becoming a wooded parcel, trees, nature, etc. That's obviously what you know. You see here that in urban areas all the time turn into a community garden. Or yeah. Is it a vacant lot or does somebody own it? That's the big difference. Well, <laughs> most of these places are owned. Right, and that's the thing. And well, I, you know what I'm saying is I mean, obviously, obviously, it's we if we own the property. We're going to no. We know, maintain. I'm talking yeah. about things that about property. Right where we don't have that issue. I'm saying, I think it's reasonable to allow a lot if it doesn't have anything on it. Like this Universal Cyclops lot. <coughs> universal Stainless. They come over every six months. <coughs> they cut it in. I'm going to suggest that instead of asking them to do that, we ask them to let it grow naturally in a good area. The only reason that we actually were asking them to cut it was because the neighbors adjacent to the lots were complaining that it wasn't cut. It, it, because it so, looks like it's supposed to be cut. Yeah, so that, that's really the reason that we were asking them to cut it. Right. right, and I'm saying if we allow it to go past just being a lot that's not cut and become a wooded area, now it's really rather attractive. There's a lot, that, there's a universal lot mm -hmm. on the right hand side of the road that that is owned by, of course, Universal. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot that used to have a house that's torn down. Mm -hmm. That's been purchased by someone. Yeah. So mm -hmm. a private owner owns it. And then you have the Universal across the street. Right. So but there is a, a private owner does own a portion mm -hmm. of land that the house used to be. He, he's planning on building something. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I'm not talking necessarily about something that somebody's trying to build on, et cetera. I'm saying, if we've got a lot that would be better served by not being cut, let's not let let's allow that to occur. Let's allow it to become a wooded lot and service us that way. You just gotta be careful with critters and stuff too. Well, you know, you have a place for somebody yeah. next door lot that would be partially maintained. Now there's trees and stuff, and they have animals coming in their backyard that they didn't have before. So you gotta be careful. We do, um, we, we do get complaints, but. Um, houses that have been done, and then we try to keep them cut down. But we, I just got a call this week about a house that that you're working on now, 1245 Dusmer, that some neighbors have been noticing mice <coughs> that didn't have mice before, and that type of thing. So it's kind of a, it's, it's it, hard work. It, it, it is it's kind of a, a yeah. 